Hi guys, so it's been a minute since I've done a proper tasting through some whiskies. Uh, I got sent a new release from 23rd Street Distillery, which is over in Adelaide. Uh, and I thought I would maybe put it up against another Australian whiskey. I know for you guys based in the States, it can be a bit frustrating sometimes when I talk about Australian products you can't get a hold of, um, but Starward is making inroads. You can get it in the States now. So if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then definitely um, give them a look up. They're, they make really delicious stuff. But I guess I also just wanted to have a little talk about how best to taste whiskey. Um, obviously the first thing being, do it how you want to do it. If you're just doing it at home, drink out of whatever glass you like. No kind of uh, judgment or uh, stress about it. Generally though, when I'm doing, I do quite a lot of judging for spirits competitions um, and we use what these are called little XL5. So they're the little kind of stemmed um, glasses. It means that your hand gets kept away from anything that you're smelling in the glass. And it has that kind of flute up towards to sort of funnel all of the aromas up there for you. Another popular option is these little Glen Cairns. So, um, you know, if you are a little bit clumsy and worry that you might knock over a stem glass and you can uh, use something like this, a little bit shorter and more steady, but again, still has that kind of like fluted funneling up. Um, pretty popular for people that drink Scotch whiskey. And then another one, if you just prefer the feel of like a nice heavy rocks glass, something like this kind of uh, smaller size of rocks, Again, just means that you're not gonna lose any of the aroma. Uh, the bigger, broader glasses where um, all of the liquid gets sort of, uh, I guess, puddled out a little bit um, can sometimes just mean that you don't get the full intensity of aroma and flavor. Uh, so keeping something a little bit smaller um, so that you can still get your nose in there and get all the good stuff is a good idea. And then we're gonna just pour one of each of these. So when I am judging, uh, you generally go through a few different kinds of criteria. Um, you look at appearance. So really, you only mark down on appearance if there's something kind of actually wrong with it, if it's a bit hazy or there's actually like little bits in there, like something hasn't been filtered properly. With whiskey, it's generally uh, just some different colors, but that can give you an indication as to what it's gonna taste like in terms of what casks have been used, you know, whether you can expect something really rich and raisiny and darker, if it's quite a dark sort of wine color that's maybe been in a wine barrel or a um, fortified wine barrel, uh, or if it's something pretty pale, you know, you could maybe suggest that that's been in a barrel that's already been used a few times, so hasn't imparted as much color on there. That's not to say that either is better or worse. It can just start to form a little opinion for you on what you might be about to taste. And then obviously we get into the aroma. So the important thing is to keep your mouth open. Obviously you're inhaling sort of um, full proof, so 40% or above uh, alcohol. Uh, so by keeping your mouth open, it allows uh, that to sort of cycle through your olfactory system rather than just having a big inhale and it all sticking in your nose and sort of singeing your nose hairs. So mouth open and then just a kind of gentle smell into the glass. Perfect, so obviously both of them, I'm getting lots of nice fruit. One is a bit more on a sort of tropical fruit flavor, a little bit more vanilla and baking spice. And the other one has um, a bit more, almost like a clove, sort of darker spice profile uh, and some red fruit in there too. Both smell really good though. Obviously you're looking for anything, um, you know, you don't want the alcohol to be jutting out too much if it's really harsh um, or if there's any kind of unpleasant flavors. Sometimes you get a bit of cork taint even in whiskey or just like a dankness that comes from if they've used casts that maybe haven't been particularly well looked after. That sort of thing is like a fault. But otherwise, yeah, you're basically just hoping for lots of nice, um, inviting whiskey aromas there. And then going in for a taste. So I'll take a small taste, roll it around my whole like palate so that um, it's sort of hitting all points in your mouth before you swallow. You can obviously spit as well and I do spit when I'm tasting 40 in a row, uh, but if you're at home and you're just doing this for fun, then go ahead and swallow. 
and you really want to be thinking about it the whole way through so if you're getting any different flavors at the front of the palette compared to the back how it feels actually going down again if it's really harsh and alcoholic or if it's still quite smooth um, and then how long the flavors last so you can be quite literal about that uh, another thing that we obviously assess is the finish um, so you can almost just count how long you can still taste the pleasant flavors in your mouth um, anything kind of five and above is quite a nice long finish. Anything a bit less than that you can maybe say is a little bit short. And then the other thing that we look at is the balance. So in my little score sheet, I'll have um, appearance, aroma, palette, which is, you know, your general flavors, what you actually get in the mouth finish and then balance so balance is basically does any one flavor jut out too much um do you feel like you can see more of the green spirit more of the oak if you're looking at whiskey specifically is everything quite nicely integrated um is the alcohol too harsh are you getting you know it's just really one note one dimensional and not much else there to play with all things to think about which is again sometimes Something's really delicious when it is just one note, but done really well. Sometimes, especially if things are maybe a bit more expensive or whatever, you'd be hoping for a bit more complexity and a bit more to think about there. Now, the reason I thought I would taste these two side by side is because 23rd Street is in an American Oak X bourbon cask. And then Starward are really known for their wine cast. So they kind of were one of the first ones to really start pushing that um, in the Australian industry because we have such a big wine um, industry here. We produce a lot of wine. So that means that there's a lot of ex wine casts uh, floating about on the market. Um, but it does mean generally that the barrel will have a bit more of an impact on the spirit. Whereas an ex bourbon cask has obviously already had bourbon in it um, and that will have taken a lot of those caramels, those vanillas, uh, just all the flavor compounds in the barrel that'll have kind of extracted that. And so the second time around or the third time around, the barrel will be a bit more inner, just have a bit less influence and you'll kind of be able to see the grain profile of the whiskey and the actual spirit character a little bit more. So I can see here in the 23rd um, Street, it's a little bit more delicate on the nose. I'm definitely kind of like getting my nose in there a little bit more to try and get the flavors, but um, I'm seeing some quite nice bright citrus, uh, a bit of vanilla um, and a bit of kind of cinnamon. Quite creamy smelling, um, which I very much enjoy in my whiskeys. And then the Star Wars a little bit more pronounced, a little bit more lifted, uh, does have an element of sort of um, red fruit and yeah, like a bit more of a savory spice. Like I'm getting almost a bit of clove in there, which is pretty fun. Wait, go ahead. Super juicy palette. Really nice lens, keeps going, but in a nice way, not in like a harsh way or anything unpleasant. I love drinking this whiskey just neat, but it also mixes really well because it kind of is like big and bold enough to stand up to other flavors. And I'm really enjoying the texture on that 23rd Street, that real kind of like creamy um, aspect to it. This is their first release. So I think if this is a sign of things to come, then we only have good things to look forward to. So a little Australian whiskey tasting. So now you know.